Next up, we have uh, Serena. Uh, she's going to talk to us about adding a feature to respond, uh, a product that's crucial to our customers' daily workflows. Uh, when you're building a feature that's, that's this impactful, you need to be sure that you're solving the right problem. Here's Serena. Hi, all. My name is Serena, and I'm a product engineer at Intercom. And I know that as product engineers, we like to build things, we like to solve problems, but we also want to have impact, right? So, but in order to have maximum impact, you need to build things that solve the right problems. How do we do that? Let me show you how this plays out with an even seemingly small feature I was working on. Here you can see the inbox. Customers write in, and this opens a conversation with a customer support agent. And over time, the number of customers increased exponentially. And with this came an increase in the number of incoming conversations. So there was a lot going on in the inbox. And our customer support agents were constantly under stress. To get conversations out of the way, they just closed them um, when a customer didn't respond. But this behavior was skewing things like reports on who is res who was resolving the most customer issues. At that time, a conversation could be in two states. It could either be open or closed. And not having a third state was really blocking us on other major features we were working on at the time. So we started designing a new state that would allow our customers to put conversations on hold. And we called that state snooze. But we all know when you have a legacy system, there's a bit of work involved under the hood to, to add a new feature especially when it affects one of the core parts of our product, conversations. So as a first step, for example, we needed to update and extend our conversations table. And we needed to do this without disrupting existing behavior for our customers or making the life for our production system engineers like Ingrid miserable. I mean, there's only so much donut places in Dublin we can buy from, right? And all the while, the number of incoming conversations increased dramatically. We also needed to keep the UI consistent. We all know how great it feels to have the same behavior on mobile as on web. And thirdly, we needed to make sure that everything is backwards compatible, because we just cannot change our API for every new feature we're adding. So we managed to navigate through all these challenges. And um, if you find me later on, I happily tell you more about them. If you get me a beer, I, I tell you about the more nitty gritty ones. And we, we shipped Snooze, and I was super proud and happy about the elegance of the solution. I couldn't wait to see it in action. But, of course, it turned out that people didn't use, the way Snoo like, didn't use Snooze the way we thought they would. The people in the, that managed the inbox were constantly, always snoozing their conversations. And this resulted in a large backlog of Snooze conversations. And they never reopened because nobody replied. All we had done was copy the previous state of uh, closed, and our analyst termed this the black hole of snooze. So we created, we created actually a new problem. And from an engineering's point of view, my work was done, right? I mean, I shipped what I built, it, was, it worked as it was supposed to, but let me tell you, it, it's pretty shit knowing that the thing you're solving doesn't actually solve a problem. In this case, even worse, because it created a new problem. And for someone like me, who likes to build things to have a positive impact, that felt like, how do you say in English, a real kick in the guts. <laughs> I had to go into my cave and do some reflection time. And I realized one thing. I realized we had built this feature in isolation and with the wrong motivation. We were so busy and focused on wanting to unblock other intercom features that we just completely forgot what we were, what we were, and why we were building it. And we also lacked context around the interaction between the people in the inbox and their customers when we added this, this new state. So we needed to go from just building things to actually solving the right problem in order to have the impact we needed. 
okay, that makes sense, but how do I as an engineer make sure that this time around I'm not just blindly building things again? Actually, Tom Kelly from the Californian design company IDEO has something to say around empathy and challenging your preconceived notions. That's exactly what we were missing. Having empathy for the users of our product, in this case, people managing the inbox, is what we were missing. So how do I go about challenging my preconceived notions then? As a first step, I sat down with our customer success team and looked literally over their shoulder and checked how they use Snooze and what works and what doesn't work when, when they have a large backlog of Snooze conversations. I also tried to gather every feedback there was from customers to really understand their pain point. And lastly, we as engineers got together with designers, analysts, researchers, PMs, and we did a post-mortem of the feature of the first solution and discussed solutions and ideas for the next. We decided that we always had to force a snooze conversation to reopen. So we added a scheduled job that would check a conversation that needs to be reopened, and this conversation then would be put on an SQS queue, and then workers would take from this, from this conversation from the queue and would change its state. And it's so obvious, right? A lot of you will say, yes, yeah, Serena, well, like, of course. But this time around, it actually worked. We had solved the black hole of snooze, and we, the next better round showed we were closer to the customer's problem. So let me get back to the question at the beginning of the talk. How do we have maximum impact as engineers? We need to build things with real people in mind in order to solve the right problem. And the key to this is empathy. Why you're solving a problem is more important than how. Neither versions of Snooze we were building were flawed from a technical level, but that's actually not the point. In the end, we spent weeks building a great technical solution that was wrong for our users. We could have saved a lot of time by just trying to understand better the interaction between people that, use, that manage the inbox and their, and their customers. When you build product, you always create new contexts and new ways of people relating to each other. And we as product engineers need to be mindful of this. Don't hit snooze on the empathy button. Thank you very much.